It's always an exciting day when we get to talk Star Wars. Let's talk Star Wars. We also like Star Wars. Ah! Welcome to Durbania, I'm Durbin, and this is my theological analysis for Star Wars Episode 4, A New Hope. Cody Curtis and I did a really great retro review of this movie. If you haven't checked it out, please check it out. We had such a good time recording that. And leading up to the release of The Last Jedi, once a month, Cody Curtis and I are going to go through the original trilogy on up through The Force Awakens, leading up to a spoiler talk of The Last Jedi. I'm really excited to embark on that journey with him, and I thought, hey along the way, why not do some theological analyses? So this is my analysis of A New Hope. I think what really stands out to us about The New Hope is just the relatability of Luke Skywalker. Any one of us could be Luke, and he's starting off in a very humble origin. I mean, he's just living a mundane, Monday through Friday kind of life, working in his uncle's fields, but he's got a sense of destiny. He's got a call on his life. And I think we could relate to that because I think every single one of us wants that for our lives. I mean, we don't always want big fame or whatever, but we want our lives to count. We want our lives to mean something. We want our lives to have a huge purpose. Like we want that for ourselves. And when we look at Luke, he's wanting that. He's wanting to leave this stage of his life and he's in a hurry to get to the next stage of his life. But his uncle's saying, please just give me one more year. Give me one more year. And it makes me wonder how many times has the uncle said, give me one more year. But the point of this is we're seeing Luke's anxiety to move on to the next phase of his life. But this reminds me a little bit of King David from the Bible, because King David has a very similar origin story with a great call on his life. You have King David, who's basically a shepherd boy. And he's a shepherd boy because his dad, Jesse, is kind of embarrassed by him. And so... This prophet Samuel shows up to anoint the very next king of Israel, and he's like, hey, Jesse, it's it's somebody in your family that's the next king. Bring out all your kids. You know, Jesse tries to leave out David. He really, he makes an effort to leave David out and lines up his other kids. It's to the point where Samuel has to go, are you sure, man, this is all the kids you got? Now, one of the things about having purpose in life and stepping and walking into that calling is it requires faith. Like, we gotta believe we got to believe that we can do it. And I think it's more than believing that we ourselves can do it. Because when you look at Luke Skywalker, it wasn't just about him believing in himself. Of course he had to believe in himself. But he had to believe in something bigger than himself. He had to learn to trust the Force. It's a mutual relationship. And he's trying to get Luke to listen to the Force and get connected into that relationship. So in a sense, he's trying to get Luke to walk by faith and not by sight and really trust the Force. We see that when he puts that helmet on on Luke that has the uh, the blast shield down so Luke can't see because Luke, he's training with that little ball with his lightsaber and shooting the little lasers and he's not doing a good job. So he covers his eyes so that he could learn to listen to the force, to trust his feelings and kind of feel what the force is telling him to do. And when that happens, he blocks a couple of the lasers from that, that little orb that's floating around. And so he's learning to walk by faith, not by sight. He's learning to put trust in something bigger than himself. He's learning to put trust in the force and learn Learning how to let the forest really, truly guide him. And so we have this exact same thing with King David, where he's spending his life learning to let God guide him. As he's out there as a shepherd, he's writing hymns and psalms to God, so he believes in God, he's talking to God, so he's learning to connect and have this relationship with God. But certain things begin to happen where David is training for the next phase of his calling. He's a shepherd boy, and a bear comes to take one of his sheep. If a bear is coming for a sheep that I'm watching, I'm saying to the bear, take the sheep, leave me alone. I will go hide, I will play dead, whatever it takes. But no, David went and took the freaking sheep from the jaws of the bear and he killed the bear. This repeats with a lion. I too would be running from a lion. He runs towards a lion and gets the sheep from the jaws of the lion and he kills the lion. So step by step, even before he's anointed king, What's going on here? He's learning to connect with God and trust something bigger than himself. And thus he's seeing how God is delivering these other things, this bear and this lion that are bigger than him. God is delivering those things into his hand. And so the next thing we see with David is we have this huge Goliath. You know the story of Goliath? This dude is like nine foot something tall. The dude is a freaking warrior and he's taunting the armies of Israel, challenging them to single combat. These are trained soldiers in Israel's army 
and all of them are so intimidated by this one guy, Goliath, none of them is volunteering themselves to go out and fight in single combat. But look what comes out of David's mouth. God has delivered into my hand the bear, God has delivered into my hand the lion, and he will deliver into my hand this Philistine. He's taken what had been trained with him in the past, and he's believing what God can do for him, and he's knowing that God will do the same thing here. And one stone, he took down a giant. So we go back to Luke Skywalker, who is now facing similar odds. He's one little guy, and he's facing a Death Star. <laughs> And so they're going over the plans of the Death Star, and the only way to blow up the Death Star, we all know this, it's that ventilation system, that little hole that is only like two meters. So they have to go and they have to shoot this thing and blow it up and cause that chain reaction. And this guy sitting next to Luke, the first words out of his mouth are, that's impossible even for a computer. But again, look at what's coming out of Luke's mouth. Out of Luke's mouth is, that's not impossible. I used to bullseye womp rats and they're not much bigger than two meters. See, that womp rat is his lion and his bear. He's looking back at what he's already accomplished. He used to target things that small all the time. And he knows that he can target something this small. And throughout this movie, he's been learning to put his trust in the force and trust this force that is bigger than himself. So now he's flying in the trench. He's heading towards this, this ventilation opening and he's getting ready to shoot. He's got his computer going and all of a sudden the voice of Obi-Wan chimes in, use the force, Luke, trust me. He puts away the computer because now he's gonna walk by faith and not by sight. And just like David, when he shot that stone with his sling, having every faith that the one stone is gonna take out that giant, Luke goes and does this. It's interesting when King David goes up against Goliath, Goliath taunts him like crazy, and David just looks at him and goes, yeah, I know, you're coming at me with sword and spear and all this stuff, but um, God is gonna conquer you, I'm gonna kill you, and I'm gonna feed your carcass to the birds. Dang, David. And Luke did the same thing when they're like, Luke, you turned off your computer. He's like, no, I can do this. See, he began to have faith, not just in himself, but faith in the force. He knew what the force was capable of, and he knew what could be accomplished through him should he just surrender to it. And that's exactly what he did, and the Death Star was destroyed. So the take home for me is this, even Luke Skywalker and that humble origin phase of his life where he was anxious to move on. By the time you get to the end of this movie and his faith is beginning to increase and he's really starting to believe in the force, he begins to speak faith. In fact, that faith works in such a way that he's realizing, you know, the guy next to him saying, this is impossible to hit such a small target. Luke's like, that's not impossible. I used to target womp rats. Suddenly he's like, I've done this. And I did this in my humble origins time and it built me up ready for something like this. Because nobody knew that taking down something so big required hitting a target so small, yet Luke was prepared to do that. And now that as his faith was growing, his language began to change. And he even looked back at that humble time and was like, oh yeah, I learned this then, I can do this now. And he knew he could do it because the force was with him. It's the same thing with David. As David is fighting this Philistine, as he's fighting Goliath, he's looking back and he's like, wow, in that humble time, I learned how to connect with God. And in that humble time, the bear came from my sheep, the lion came from my sheep, and God delivered the bear and the lion into my hands. So what's this giant to God? And so that's the mindset that faith begins to build, that as we begin to feed our heart faith, it's gonna to begin to change our language and faith is what's gonna to begin to even come out of our mouths. And I look at that and I go, that is something that is extremely valuable, walking by faith and not by sight. So when you watch Star Wars and New Hope, what do you think of this movie? What message do you get as you're watching it? Be sure to let me know in the comments and while you're there, hit the subscribe button to become a Durbanian. And next to the subscribe button is the bell. Click that bell so you're notified the moment I drop new videos and all kinds of fun stuff like that. I'm Durbin, thank you so much for checking out Durbania.